Is there more than one way to heaven? Does God show favoritism? And why were all the disciples male? Welcome to this week's Life Questions. I'm Bill Harris. People are searching for answers in today's complex world, and the Bible was written with your questions in mind. Many of the answers to your questions are conveyed across the pulpit in churches. And today, we have assembled a group of pastors to answer those questions that you have sent us. Let's meet them. Our first pastor is Russ Thomas of the Gathering Place and New Creation Lutheran of Elida, Ohio. And he's followed by Pastor Darnell Williams of the New Life Church International. And rounding off our clergy panel is Pastor Brandon Green of Calvary Chapel of Praise in Lima. Gentlemen, we're happy to have all of you with us today. So glad to be it's here. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having right. us. You know, I like this first question that we're going to be dealing with here today because it's really a question that's, be, that's being asked out there all around the world. People think that, well, Christians are very narrow because they think that the only way to get to heaven is the way they believe. How can you tell us that Christianity is the only way to heaven? How, how do you answer that, gentlemen, and, and not try to seem superior in your religious beliefs over everybody else? Sure. Who wants to tackle that? Sure. I'll throw my hat in. Um, you know, clearly the scriptures tell us that Jesus is the way, yeah. the truth, the life. Yeah. Peter, when he preached on the day of Pentecost, said there is no other name given under heaven yeah. whereby men must be saved must but be. the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, Jesus told us narrow is the way mm -hmm. that yeah. leads to righteousness. So I think in a, in a time where inclusion and diversity and equality is, is, is coming to the forefront to say we are exclusive and we believe something that is so seemingly narrow can set us up to be uh, persecuted and uh, be adversarial. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's not our intent to be right. adversarial. No. That's right. We're just trying to obey what we understand the scriptures to teach and what the Lord has commanded us. Mm -hmm. um, that's why we are so motivated to give in missions and outreach and to, to go into the world because we recognize that there is no other way mm -hmm. to get a life-giving relationship with, with the Father but through Christ and what, he's, what he did on Calvary's cross for us. But surely, the, surely there are people there who don't have any type of background or history in, in Christ Jesus, people who've never been taught this, won't they be able to get to heaven if you're saying there's only one way? What, what, what's, what's, what, what's up with that? You know, um, everyone wanted to celebrate Jesus the week before he died because he was a good teacher. He was a rabbi. Uh, everybody loves Jesus, the benevolent Jesus that provides meals Absolutely. on wheels, you know, <laughs> as, as long as you heal some folks. That just don't proclaim that you're going to be God. You know, that's where people begin to have a problem because if you're God, then I realize I've got to submit myself to you and I'm kind of uncomfortable with some of your teaching. Mm -hmm. So that's what actually got Jesus. It, it was that religious mindset that mm -hmm. got Jesus killed uh, at the cross. But I believe personally, it's a grave injustice for us to say any other religion can lead you to heaven as long as you're sincere in your faith because it's almost like uh, the injustice to say what all that the Father allowed Jesus to go through at Calvary, the brutal crucifixion, the murder of Jesus, uh, it would be almost like a slap in the face to say, well, it wasn't quite necessary because all of these other religions lead to the Father. Mm -hmm. And you know, no man will die for a lie. So you, you think about... Um, there is only one Jesus. There is only one here, Holy Spirit that he left us, the Comforter. That's right. And so through that Spirit, um, I believe that Jesus died on the cross to gain us salvation, to access the Father, and then left us his Holy Spirit so we can access each other in love. Um, a lot of people are looking for that visual example of Jesus. And, mm -hmm. and honestly, it's available. It's the, the, uh, the uh, physical evidence of a living God is in a transformed life. And if the only... The only explanation for a transformation from the old man to the new man is the receiving of the Holy Spirit. You know, people who have known you in the past and know you now say that this lasted longer than two weeks. So I do believe the physical evidence of a living God, which is through Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. is a transformed life. Mm -hmm. And Pastor Green, you 
took us to the cross. And Rush, you mentioned what the cross does in life, but we also got to remember the resurrection. Mm. That's right. Amen. That Jesus, Jesus yeah. conquered death. Yeah. Jesus defeated hell. Yeah. Jesus opened up a pathway of righteousness for us to make it into the presence of the Father. So I think when you look at what Jesus did in that, in that weekend, that's why that uh, uh, time from Good Friday to Resurrection Sunday is a height of, mm -hmm. the, of, of the Christian year because we realize Jesus did so much to make a way yeah. for us. Yeah, and I love the fact that if we ever question how, how much God loves us, look how far, <laughs> if you look at the cross, how far God would go to yes. rescue humanity out of the pit that, that we were in by putting our faith in what he did at the cross. That would show us how far God would go to rescue us. Yes. We who didn't deserve it, couldn't earn it, yes. he did it in spite of. Yes. While we were yet sinners, Christ, Christ died, died for us. Yes. That's yes. love. The cross equals love. It equals love. And in scripture, it specifically says that Jesus tells the apostles, I, I have to leave you so that I can leave that comfort of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And because what, one of the, it was many traits that, that Jesus gave as to why he has to leave us the Holy Spirit. But the number one was, was its job is to convict the world of sin, not necessarily convict you of sin. It says to convict the world of sin. And all that is, is the Father wants us to know that sin exists and that we need a savior. Amen. So when you look at in Psalms, it says, as far as the East is from the rest, our transgressions are forgotten. Mm -hmm. So when God sees us, in Christ, mm -hmm. then all he sees is the righteousness of Christ. He doesn't even see the sin that dwells in us. Mm -hmm. And that's why the, the Comforter Holy Spirit said, I need to come to show you that sin exists so that you know you need a savior solely. Let me touch on, on something that you said, uh, Pastor Williams, you talked about in this day and time of inclusion. Mm -hmm. Is it possible then that if we, I hate to use this term, but if we exclude mm -hmm. the other religions, are we nonetheless possibly setting ourselves up for persecution by saying that this is the only way, that Jesus is the only way. Mm. With all the good reasons and the good background that you gave to support your answers, are we setting ourselves up for persecution because we are not being inclusive? Yeah, that's a difficult, difficult position because none of us want to welcome persecution. Yeah. But if it comes down to, do I stay true? And I believe the apostles have answered that question in the book of Acts. Do, tell us what should we do? Should we obey God or man? What, mm -hmm. Here's our choices. And we, like them, have to say, we've got to obey the Lord. We've got to stand true to what the scriptures teach. Uh, it is not a, po a posture. And the, the dangerous thing is, when it is interpreted and when it is verbalized, it's verbalized as hatred and bigotry. Yeah. Um, those types of things, but really Christianity first and foremost is about love. That's mm -hmm. right. Yep. God loving the world, John three sixteen, us loving others like he loved us, us extending love through compassion and, and, and touch and outreach and alleviating the suffering of others. And so um, many times we think the world portrays Christianity as something negative, but really it is the hope of the world. Amen. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times, um, Christians are viewed as being narrow-minded, but broad is the way of destruction. Yeah. Narrow is the way to find life. And if you look at even Hollywood films, you don't see Muhammad's name in a derogatory <laughs> manner. You don't see Buddha's name, Hare Krishna. It's only one name. And I believe this, hell uh, causes um, the influence in Hollywood and culture and media uh, to try to stir up strife against the name of Jesus because the devil knows, as Bishop said, <laughs> there is no other name given yes. among men whereby we may be saved. There is no other powerful name than the name of Jesus the Christ. Name of Jesus. Wow. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Then how do we, how do we, uh, how do we deal with the fact that when we, when we take this position, and I agree with all of you, what you're saying, that somehow, some way, there are those out there who are feeling that you are in fact bigots, that you hate people, that don't, mm. that don't uh, yeah. believe the same way you do. Yeah. That's a fine line you have to walk, mm. sure. I guess. Because you can't compromise the truth for the sake of trying to include people who believe differently. But how do you walk that fine line? 
Mm. I, I think you lead with love. Yeah. Uh, Pastor Russ mentioned about a transformed life. You know, as people interact with us and they see us and they behold the love of Christ in us and through mm -hmm. us, uh, that is attractive. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So even though the world is, is constantly searching for an answer, mm -hmm. I believe that the love of God shown through his people yeah. is still very attractive. It yes. still draws people yes. in. It, steals, it still welcomes people. Yes. And so we as ambassadors of, of the kingdom have to make sure first that our testimonies stay intact, uh -huh. that we live lives that glorify Christ, yeah. that we put him first, and uh, we don't create environments around us that cause a snare for him, and that we, we really lead out with love and lead out with embrace. Um, you know, sometimes we can get too transactional. <laughs> and, and as we used to say, we, we try and clean a fish before we catch it. That's right. <laughs> That's right. When in point of fact, it's never our mm -hmm. job or responsibility no. to clean the fish. In Only the first place. It. Right. <laughs> Only to catch right. it. Right. The cross is the ultimate fillet board. Amen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it is. I ain't never true. heard it put that. Yes, That's, That's very true. The ultimate fillet board. That's, That's excellent. Well, listen, we, uh, I want to come back and um, discuss another matter that I think is important. We've exhausted this topic here today, and I think you've explained it very well. The other question I'd like to deal with is, does God show favoritism? Mm. Mm. When, we look at, when we look at certain parts of the world, and we see plenty, and we look at other parts of the world, and there is far, far less than plenty, is this, is this showing that God, in fact, has favoritism? And what about even in this country alone, where you've got ghettos on one side of town, mm. and you've got uh, the Sugar Hill on the other mm -hmm. side of town? Mm. Is God showing favoritism? Let's deal with that in a moment. We'll be right back to deal with that subject right after this. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now, back to the discussion. All right, we're back with our panel of experts. <laughs> and we're here to discuss the subject this time around, does God show favoritism? And that question comes to us from our viewers. Our yes. viewing public wants you to know that who are looking around the world and they see pockets of poverty and, pop, and pockets of affluence and the like. How do you, how do you explain that? And, and even in, in one city alone, when you see folks living in the ghetto on one side of town and living up on Sugar Hill mm -hmm. on the other side mm -hmm. of town, mm -hmm. uh, how, do you, how do you justify all that? Sure. You want to justify I find that, yeah. that um, it, it is difficult to see things uh, played out in our news on television and watch people suffering. and and hardships. You know, I'm, I'm raising a four-year-old who's continually reminding me about this is not fair or that is not fair. And a lot of the times it's based on a lack of maturity, I, mm -hmm. I find. And when we come to the realization that God doesn't play fair, He's just. And that God does operate, I believe, in favoritism in some capacity, meaning this. God begins to look over the scan of our life to see what we were equipped to handle. So if I would bless you with something large, sometimes that could be greater uh, of a headache than, <laughs> than sure. a blessing to me. Sure. You know, uh, there's this misnomer that the Bible says God won't give you more than you can handle, but 1 Corinthians 10, 13 actually says there's no temptation that's taken a hold of you that is common to man, but God is faithful. He will not suffer you to be tempted beyond your ability to mm. bear. I believe God understands mm -hmm. our capacity. I believe God realizes and, and, and knows what we're equipped to handle in this life. But this is the thing that I, I tell people, don't, don't get jealous. When, exactly. when God's blessing somebody or blessing this region, go get yours, <laughs> yeah. you know? Right. Uh, if, if you were jealous about your neighbor, instead, why don't you celebrate the fact that God's moved into yes. your neighborhood? Yes, amen. So in, amen. In, in matters of blessing and cursing, it's a matter of perspective. So um, when, when things are going good in my life, I'm just smiling and smiling. I'm not worried about what's happening in anyone else's life, even if they're receiving a present cursing. 
So it's a matter of perspective. So when I start to, to, to fall prey to a cursing or a problem in my life, then I start looking at what everybody else has. But when things are going good, I don't right. really notice mm -hmm. trials and errors mm -hmm. because they're not affecting me. So it's, it's a matter of perspective too on how you're looking at others and what they're receiving. And we don't look when we're smiling. Well, and, and it is subjective because, you know, the, even the Sermon of the Mount, Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn yes. because they'll be comforted. Mm -hmm. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. Yes. So it, it's relative. And if you have the maturity to see what God is doing in you in this season, you can celebrate that fact that God knows what you can handle in this time of your life. Sure. Scripture never says if, it says when, when, when we suffer. So yeah. that's, that's everyone, it's across the board. And I think there's a difference between the favor of God mm -hmm. versus favoritism. Mm -hmm. And favoritism can sometimes be uh, relationally, governmentally, nepotism, nepotism mm -hmm. all types political. of motivations, yeah. political. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the favor of God can mm -hmm. find us even when favoritism is bypassing us. Yes, sir. You read yes, about sir. Joseph, he yes. found favor yeah. in Polyphus house. He found favor Amen. in the prison. He found favor with Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. And so the Bible is clear about us I think we should ask God to bless us with his favor, yeah. and crown us with his favor. Mm -hmm. And at times when you start walking in the favor of God, it may make you look like God is, has, <laughs> yeah. is favoritism. paying favoritism, right. but mm -hmm. you're just walking out the favor of God over your life and over That's your right. That's do, right. Do you contend nonetheless that there politically there may be a male distribution of wealth? Oh, absolutely. Perhaps for political yeah. reasons, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, think of some examples, if you, if you will, and, and how do you address them? Well, I took a missions trip to Haiti. Yeah. And, oh, and enough I, said I, right there. Yeah, yeah I've, absolutely. I've, I've never seen anything like that. And, and there were, even there, pockets of the poor are very, very, very poor, and the mm -hmm. wealthy are very, very, very wealthy. Mm -hmm. There's not much margin between. Yeah. And you ask yourself, you know, why connected on the same island is the mm -hmm. Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. You say just two hour plane ride mm -hmm. away, yes. you're, you're in America. Why is there this disproportion? And there's a lot of factors that, that play into that. Right. You mentioned political, there's mm -hmm. you know, motivations of the leaders, uh, mm -hmm. the system of government and the structures, yeah. you, know, is it, um, you know, is it a free trade market? Is it or versus socialists or communists and just type all of the these things of begin yeah. to play into yeah. how the people experience prosperity on their individual yeah. lives yeah and so it's a complex issue going around um to different uh foreign countries i i've seen that very thing played out been to haiti before and one common thread that i also find is paradigms are very powerful mm -hmm. and if you believe that you are something it's very hard to persuade you differently and so one thing that the gospel can do is release hope to break a poverty mentality. And we need more people declaring the gospel of hope yes. to people that are in foreign countries, mm -hmm. uh, that Jesus doesn't want to just leave you in the condition that you're found, that there is the ability for you to uh, ascend higher. Even like Joseph, who was in a pit, he did move into a palace mm -hmm. because he took hold of the promises of God. I believe that, that yes. was spoken over his life. It was his, so, had to do with his paradigm, though, didn't it? Yes, it was his paradigm that needed to be shifted. Yeah, we yeah. need a shifting in paradigms. Mm -hmm. So on more of a local level, too, uh, a lot of the folks that God puts in my path in ministry, um, locally, the zonings uh, play a big part in, uh, I just call it zoning discrimination. They can control what, what goes here, what goes there. Uh, one of the most heart-wrenching things I've seen locally was when the, the market at the corner of 3rd Street and St. John's burnt. Um, it created a food desert there that now there's only one location that you can obtain food and, and they're, they're at liberty to raise their prices if they want it and get mm -hmm. away with it versus getting on the bus and riding out to Walmart. Mm -hmm. So it, it caused a burden there and I, I'm, I'm seeing nothing take its place. So that's why we need more of a diverse local government to control those situations and mm -hmm. make sure that we're, yeah. we're covering all the, all the areas of the community mm -hmm. and that people aren't suffering uh, food loss because mm -hmm. of um, economics because of, of government entities. Do I hear underneath what you're saying that maybe capitalism is the way that you, when you get more competition there, the <laughs> prices will come down? Mm. <laughs> one of you guys want to touch that one. <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't have to yeah. answer that, but uh, that's, that's true. And, and uh, you know, 
we have to somehow convey the message that you're talking yeah. about because God's system of priorities and, and, and prosperity, I should yeah. say, is so far different than the world. I basically tell people very often that in, in the world, uh, you're basically dealing with a system of buying and selling, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whereas in God's kingdom, it's sowing and, and reaping. That's right. Yep. That's right. And that's we right. have that's what we have to convey and, and get right. that down to the level where the the great unwashed, that is, those who are not washed in the blood of Christ, can understand God's economy versus man's economy. That's right. Amen. My my father um, was born into a very uh, poor part of the town. Um, in fact, his first six months, he lived in a school bus, mm -hmm. and it was very challenging. But he would always testify, he's with Jesus now, mm -hmm. that God took him from a school bus to the pulpit. But it was the power of the seed, mm -hmm. and that which was in, he entrusted to him, he didn't eat his seed. He continued to sow his seed, mm -hmm. and even though it did take time, he did see a harvest. And if you're faithful with little, God will make you. Those principles are those true principles in whatever work. capacity of life yes. you're yes. in. Yep. Yes. You will be ruler over much. Yes. And they work whether you're whether you're a Christian or not. When yep. you, when That's you, right. I mean, there are people today who who don't embrace Christ, but they give. They're they quite give. philanthropic. Yes. A law is a law is a law. A law is a law is a law. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yes. 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 So true. Yes. And now, and I think that among Christians, another thing that you said that we really need to spend time teaching our congregations about and that is the sowing of seeds mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. don't eat your seed that's sow right. it. Yeah, sow absolutely it. what would happen if a farmer ate doubled up and ate seed. all the seeds he there would be no harvest yeah be no harm no scarcity yeah. mindset and i think in in, in many cases and, and this gets into money management mm -hmm. you know the bible speaks to money about 2300 times mm -hmm. absolutely <laughs> and when we get into the the principles of money management we can see where god will bless us as mm -hmm. we begin to uh Take a hold of his principles yes. and go with them. Yes. And, and one of the things about sowing and reaping is that when you sow, there's a time mm -hmm. until harvest comes. That's yes. right. And so we read of things, Paul telling us, do not grow weary in, in well, doing well, what's good. Come on, that's doing right. what's right. That's Cause right. Because in due season, you shall reap if you don't faint. Right. That yeah. waiting time sometimes can cause us to lose hope yeah. yes and yeah. cause us to give up and say well this doesn't work maybe that's right Preach. maybe no. maybe god is showing yeah. favorites maybe yeah. Yeah. the yeah. principle won't work for me but i just need to be patient yeah. isn't that what you hear people say though it, this isn't working for it me. Isn't it's working. a life of the enemy you know a lot of times you know the enemy will say you didn't have all these problems before you was going to church <laughs> you should just stay <laughs> home and relax i mean you were doing better when you weren't given when you weren't reading your bible and when you know that heat or that resistance that you are facing oftentimes i believe it precedes a breakthrough yes you don't know how closer you could be Amen. to what god had promised you if you'll just keep and not be weary, continue yes. to stand and yes. see the yes. salvation of the Lord in whatever capacity that he's called you into. Yes. I like the breakthrough part because um, any seed that I've ever planted that flourished was planted in darkness. It's always planted That's in right. darkness and it mm -hmm. fights to see the light. Once it sees the light, the fruit, the That's fruit right. and the harvest yeah. comes. That's you right. gentlemen seem to be tipping your toes into something that's very controversial in the church, and that is the paying of tithes mm. and giving an <laughs> offerings, and uh, how God says he will bless those uh, who, who, pay, who pay their tithes yes. and, and who give it an offering. Uh, do you care to venture into that discussion at all? <laughs> the only thing Absolutely. I'll say is I don't pay my tithes I give. because they don't belong to That's me. That's right. Exactly. I return them I to return the Lord them. because yes. he has requested that. Yeah. He's given it to me as a steward yeah. Yeah. and I return it to him. I don't really give until I go beyond the ten. That's right. But That's a spirit right. of generosity, uh, you, you know, you talk about favor. You, you, you can't outrun the favor of God when you contain a spirit of generosity. That's right. Yeah. And when you... So now we're kind of doubling back. When you honor the poor, when you show respect that's right. Give and to the honor Lord. to those that, yes. that are in need. That's a priority uh, of God. That's a priority. It Psalm is. 41 talks about yeah. blessed is he who regards yeah. the poor. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it goes and gives promises that God makes. Yes. One of them is when you're on your bed of on affliction, your sick bed. on your sick bed, the Lord that's will right. hear your prayers Amen. because you had regard and honor for the poor. Amen. So, you want to chime in on this at all? Yeah, I guess in the New Covenant standard, I see it says to, to be cheerful givers, not under compulsion. And I believe that if we really search our hearts and give where God wants us to give, 
where he directs us to give his resources like you said mm -hmm. um, I believe that you'll blow 10% out of the water I've mm -hmm. working for a homeless shelter I see people of faith and not of faith and they continually blow the tithe out of the water because of that cheerful giving concept uh, in Corinthians so um, it's just one of those things that I believe sowing and reaping. Mm -hmm. Once you've reaped what your sowing is given, the next time you will over yes. achieve yes. your previous sowing because you know the blessing that's coming, whether you're of faith or not, because a law is a law is a law, like you yes. said. And it's not the principle of giving and then waiting in great, right. uh -huh. and, and great expectation for a return. It's, it's giving out of obedience, but you know that God's not going to leave you high and dry that's because right. you reach right. right. way down to that's give. Right. That's right. He's going to return that's because right. that is his economy. Yes. I and give to give again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Very, very I, I, believe that, I believe in that. And I also believe in assigning my seed. You know, I don't believe in just, you know, God's going to bless me financially, although I do believe that. Mm -hmm. But I also believe in assigning my seed. And every week in um, our church, um, we hand out offering envelopes and you can fill out a prayer request. And we take hold of those and we go to God uh, on behalf of the people that are believing God for breakthrough in a particular area. And Amen. we've seen answers to prayer for Amen. that. Amen. Amen. Very good. Because giving is an act of faith. Act of it faith. really yeah. is. I, I have this. It's under my control. It's in my possession. It really is. And I have to release it. I have to let it go. And that's an act of faith. Mm -hmm. And God rewards our faith. I wish the scriptures would have went more into detail of the blessing the widow got when she turned over the two mites. I was just uh -huh. always curious mm -hmm. what she received. Because it's not always money for money. It's yeah, the, the right. blessing right. sometimes Isn't is just, right. it far mm -hmm. exceeds what money, yeah. money can yes. buy. Yeah. So. yeah, sometimes the blessing can turn out to be healing for one of your family. Yes, yes. Right. yes. That's that's right. Right. yes. Well, that just shows the broad mindedness of God, of God. and yes. Him knowing what our needs are yes. to begin with. Yep. And the fact that we are faithful initially in our giving mm -hmm. and we're doing what he has commanded Amen. us to do. And, and God going forward and blessing generations to come. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because yes. we were obedient. Yes. It's intergenerational. It's, it it's intergenerational. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, God says of Abraham, he said, I, I know that he will instruct his children. Yeah, mm -hmm. 19th chapter of Genesis. Yeah, yeah. in my way. Yeah. My, yeah. um, my ceiling, if you will, uh, can become my future generation's yeah, floor. floor. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I believe a, even mm -hmm. as Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek, yes. uh, he was releasing a blessing that would not impact just his life, but yes. he thought of multi-generational. Multi-generational. Just think of yes. what a breakthrough your giving can do, not just for you now mm -hmm. in 2019, mm -hmm. but what it can do for your grandchildren. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That's God's economy. It just keeps going. Yes. It keeps, keeps going. going right across yes. the generations. Going. And seeds of hope going. grow the same thing for the next generation. That's right. it's, yeah. Yes. It's an attitude right. that carries on and on, not only monetarily, but, but from a, a perspective of hope. Yeah. Yes, amen. Well, good. This is a very good discussion. <laughs> I certainly hope you've enjoyed this. I, yes, I, I, yes, I have. Most amen. enlightening. And you know what I thank God for you for the most is the revelation of the word that you have. Amen. Yes. It's beyond just the initial of what God is saying and yes. the revelation behind it. Yes. That is so important. Mm. Thank God for your, uh, your contributions today. Thank you. Appreciate you much. Listen, that's our program for today. And t please keep in mind that uh, every week we bring on a panel of experts, <laughs> as uh, <laughs> that one of our guests is like to, like to hear us say, bring on a panel of experts to deal with the issues that we are confronted with here in life. So call two or three of your friends next week and tell them to tune in because we're dealing with life concerns and we're answering life's questions mm. from a biblical perspective. So until next week at this same time, I'm Bill Harris. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.